so slots, frames, excuse me, are divided into eight slots, and slots consist of um, 546.5 microseconds of burst, in other words, that's data transmission, and 30.5 microseconds of guard time <coughs> for a total of, for a total of, Five seventy seven. Five hundred and seventy seven microseconds in total. So each of these guys <coughs> is five hundred and seventy seven microseconds. And so on, and eight of those. Actually if you do the multiplication yourself, it doesn't exactly add up to four point six one five. Uh, there must be a round up here somewhere. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what the number is here or if the error is here, but I think if you multiply 577 by 8, you get 4.616 or something, so it's just a round up. <coughs> so, the burst contains 148 bits. The guard time obviously contains nothing. In, in the guard time, you don't transmit, and your radio is not transmitting anything. But the burst is where you transmit your data, and in the burst we have 148 bits. Actually, let me write this up here. In the burst we have three bits synchronization. Um, 57 bits of data. One control bit. This is in sequential order from the beginning of the bit uh, of the first. One control bit, also called an S bit for some reason. 26 training bits. A training sequence is basically a known sequence um, that's applied to the channel to help you learn any channel characteristics, such as uh, what's the current channel amplitude, uh, what's the current channel strength, uh, is there any, uh, any multi-path that you need to that you need to estimate and take take uh, take into account. Uh, so this is just basically a known sequence. Following the training bits, another control bit. These are distinct, by the way. So there's actually a symmetrical structure to the burst, but um, it's not like this end is the mirror image. That one, these can be different from, from, from the ones that are in the beginning. Another 57 bits of data. And then three bits of tail. So in the end, out of those 148 bits, how much data do we have? 114. 114 bits. So every 4.6 milliseconds. Yeah. So you have 100. Okay. So there's there's two questions here. First question: What is the peak data rate? Or the peak bit rate? <coughs> peak bit rate I will uh, define as um, if you took the maximum bit rate at which the system transmits. Did that all the time, what would be the bit rate? So here we have 148 bits divided by um, the time over which those 148 bits are transmitted, 546.5 microseconds. If you do that, if you take 
calculator and do that, you'll find the, the peak um, data rate. Actually, does someone have a calculator? I'm not sure I did this right in my notes. Anybody? That's true, but I just want to I just want to say uh, what's the peak fit rate? So if you didn't have to worry about card calls right now, what's the peak fit rate? Pardon me? 0.4270. So it's 0.4270. 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 Question is what's the uh, useful bit rate per user? How would we calculate that? It's the useful bit per total. So, how many useful bits do we have? 114 useful bits. So, we send that every. <laughs> 4.615. Every 4.615 milliseconds. Uh, and if you calculate, if you work that out, you get 24.7 kilobits per second. So the total useful bit rate. Extra space to guard time, tail bits, training bits, and so on. 